The next method we want to implement is to have some search criteria over the refurbished store. For example, let's say I want to find out all the products, which is either the iPad Pro or it's a space gray finish. Okay, that's something we'll like to achieve uh, in this video. Let me first of all declare the method header and then we'll speak about its algorithm and then we'll do the coding and testing. Again, let's now click on the refurbished store class and let's go all the way to the end. Okay, so let's now declare a new method. And let me maximize this. Okay, and move that to the middle. And let's now see the header for the uh, method. Public method, and it's going to be an accessor. And it, was, uh, it is going to return it's a string array, array of string. It is expected that every string in the array is going to denote some existing serial number. Okay. And let's now give a name uh, that's informative. Let's say get space gray or pro. Okay, for now, I'll just return now just to make a compile. Okay, just return any reference value. Okay, and let's now make some notes over here. Okay, uh, return the serial numbers of all products that are either uh, they are either with space gray finish or is a pro, right? Either way, okay? Either or, right? So now you may want to think about which logical operator that you learned from the first year that you should use, right? It looks like a dis uh, disjunction to me, but what's the disjunction operator? We'll see that when we need to uh, implement the code, okay? You may want to pause the video before I go over the algorithm and also to go over the code together with you, right? Otherwise, uh, let's now do it together. So this is the visualization of the three entry uh, test that we actually have done so many times. Let me still use the same scenario so easier for me to present the algorithm at a high level together with you, okay? So what we eventually want to have is like this. Eventually, we want to have some output over here, let me call that serial numbers, SNS. It's gonna be a string array, okay? And let's say in this case, how many products do we have that's either space gray or pro? How many? Well, apparently the first product over here is a space gray. So it definitely uh, satisfied the uh, search criteria. And what about the second one? Second one, does it satisfy space gray? No, it's gold. Does it satisfy Pro? No, it's iPad Air. So it's satisfy none. So this one should not be included for its serial number. Okay, so this one should not be included. What about the third one? It is Pro, iPad Pro. However, it's silver, which does not satisfy space gray. But we're talking about or, like a logical disjunction. So now in this case, as long as one of the criteria is actually satisfied, we should collect its serial number. So in this case, Pro will also be satisfied. So what we eventually want to collect will be the serial numbers for this products and also this product, which will be this serial number here and this serial number here. That's what we want to collect eventually. So let me just write down the output over here and then we'll see how to achieve that, right? So the input is pretty much like the scenario like this, the, uh, the setup for the object structure. And the output is going to be, well, in this case, we just want two serial number to be returned. So index zero, index one, right? So you can think about one of them is going to be this one here, right? This one. So it's going to be F9, FDN, and etc. And the second one is going to be this serial number, 7YM4P, and etc. That's the output we're expecting. But now, how do we achieve that, right? Let me present the algorithm to you in a stepwise manner and then we'll try to implement that faithfully. So that, that, again, as I said in the earlier video, when you are given some new routine or new method to implement, you don't really have much clue. You may just want to visualize some uh, example scenario for the object structure. And then from there, you can maybe work out some concrete steps from there, right? That's exactly what I'm trying to show you right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some auxiliary counter and some auxiliary uh, array for me to actually achieve the purpose, right? The first one I want to have is, I want to have some auxiliary array, okay? And for that one, I'm going to call that indices. So the indices array, okay, uh, the size of the indices array is not arbitrary, okay? So now let me, let me ask you the, uh, the following question. In theory, what is the 
maximum number of products that was uh, satisfying the search criteria. I'm asking both for the maximum and also the minimum. What will be the maximum? Well, the maximum should be corresponding to how many entries you have got, right? The maximum will be the case where all the serial numbers got their corresponding products satisfying the search criteria. I'm talking about in theory, not just about this particular example, right? So maximum will be actually uh, the number of entries. In this case, it will just be three, okay? What about the minimum? The minimum will be, well, zero because it could be that none of the entries in the store actually will satisfy the uh, search criteria. So let's understand this one, right? We know the theoretical lower bound and the upper bounds for products that will satisfy the uh, search criteria. So it will go from zero up to including the number of entries that's in the shop, in the store, okay? So that's why indices over here we should choose. So just in case, if all the products in the store will actually satisfy the search criteria. In that case, we need enough spaces to hold the indices for their position, right? For example, if this particular one will uh, satisfy the search criterion, uh, criteria, I'm going to keep its index for the entries array, which will be zero. It's kind of similar to how we uh, return the products, uh, its corresponding index, right, in internally in the earlier uh, video when we try to do the get products method. And also, if this one satisfies the search criteria, for example, in that case, we want to uh, record its index, which will be one, right? So uh, that's why I call this indices. So in this particular example, since NOE is actually three, so we know that we need to have indices array of size three. The maximum index accordingly should be two. Let's now draw that. So indices will be some auxiliary array I'll declare as local variable inside the method implementation. So it's going to be of size three. So that'll be zero, one, and two. And as a notes, so this will be exactly NOE minus one, okay? And what indices should we actually store? Well, in this case, uh, we know that eventually we want to collect e uh, this products and also this product, that'll be okay. We don't necessarily have to occupy all the slots in the indices, as long as we have enough space to save, uh, to save the indices in the worst case where all the products actually satisfy the search criteria, we, we, we will be okay. But in this particular example, we, we are only going to collect the indices for this and also this. And while we're collecting them, we should also keep track of how many products have been uh, collected because they actually uh, pass the search criteria. So we just need another um, uh, auxiliary variable, which I will call count. Okay, let me put it here. There should be another criteria over here. I will call that count. Okay, so now imagine the following, okay, conceptually. We are going to run a loop to go over indices, uh, index by index, to go through 0, 1, and 2, right? Remember we said earlier, you don't really want to go beyond NOE minus 1. Otherwise, you might run into null pointer exception. That's what we said earlier in the earlier video. We also did some tracing together with you, okay? And that's your office hour. <laughs> Let's now simply get rid of it. All right. Let's now try to... Uh, Im uh, Imagine what's going to happen, okay? So now for the very first iteration, I will check to see this particular entry, okay? Does its corresponding products actually satisfy the criteria? It does because it got pro, also got space gray. Either one will be okay, but it satisfy both. Of course, it should be collected. In that case, we should really uh, collect its index, which will be zero, right? So there are two things we should do. Number one, we should really uh, say the index over here should be zero over here. That's why I'm using different color, right? So index over here tells us where in the corresponding position should we find the products that will satisfy the search criteria, okay? And number two, things, uh, thing number two we want to do, we also want to increment the count into one because so far we have collected just one products index, right? Zero and one. Let's now move on. When we go to iteration number two, this entry over here has air, which does not satisfy, and gold also does not satisfy. So we are not going to collect it. So nothing happened. And then when we actually go to the third iteration for index two, this product here will satisfy pro, but not space gray. 
but that's okay as long as we satisfy one because it's disjunction so now in this case we're going to collect index two over here so what's going to happen is i'm going so this also this one here is a little bit like the second uh, the two purposes for noe one also suggests what's going to be the next index in the indices array where we can store the next index right so now in this case we're going to store index two over here at index one of the indices array over here right you're going to think it through really okay and then uh we also need to incre uh, increment this from one to two so that means if we got another index to actually collect in that case it should be stored in index two of the indices array but now in this case since we have gone through all the three products already so we don't have to go any further so in this case uh, this indices presumably you will just get a re uh, default value just zero but of course we are not when we go over the indices array to retrieve the corresponding products we don't go beyond the value for count minus one we don't really go beyond that we only go for zero and one and one is exactly equal to two minus one right there are many that's why i'm using different color to denote different concept even though they have the same uh, numerical value so just be careful okay so once we get an indices array, so now how do you see the correspondence between indices and serial numbers? We cannot just return the indices array as the output, can we? No, we cannot, right? So now zero over here, do you see any correspondence with this? Okay, let's see. So now what we want to do is, um, we want to say this, uh, let me write it down. Serial numbers over here at uh, index zero, okay versus indices at position zero and also serial numbers at index one versus indices at index one you want to see what the correspondence is right how do you see the correspondence okay this and also this okay you can pause the video and think about it before i tell you the answer all right okay here is the uh, the, uh here is the uh, uh the the answer okay you can see that basically this value over here is supposed to be uh let me put it here for example if i want to do some uh, uh, variable assignments serial numbers at position zero if i want to get this particular serial number i need to index into maybe uh here I need to index into index zero of the indices, in which case I would retrieve the value zero, right? So that means I'm going to go into indices at position zero. Notice that this zero here and this zero here, they actually match, right? Imagine that we're gonna run a loop in the actual solution. And once I retrieve this particular zero, what should I do? This index refer to where you should really look for in the entries array, right? So what I should do is I should do uh, some outer expression over here. I would say rs dot entries at position like that. So this is a complicated expression you want to get uh, yourself you know uh, familiar with. Okay. Let me just do another one. So this one it just happened to be zero. So it may not be as easy for uh, maybe not the best way for you to see. Let's do just do another one. What about index one over here? So we also get SN uh, serial numbers at index one. So would be should be assigned to RS dot entries. And over here, let me just move a little bit more space over here. Okay. Oops. And then I think I'm missing some part over here. Let me just uh, get it back. okay and then let me now move some space over here good entries and then i would say indices at position one think about if you're running a loop the zero and one here i actually put in orange highlighter so these are the loop counters that uh, like an eye right that I, I will eventually get all right so now in this case you can see let's see uh for the pink one what's indices one indices one is actually indices one is going to give you two and then rs.entries2 is going to give you 
this particular object over here, right? This entry object, and then its corresponding serial number will be this one that we want to collect, right? So that's why you will go for rs.entries, and then I should do one more expression, which I forgot, right? I should say really dot get serial number, okay? That will be a type correct. And also for, for the blue one here, similarly, I should also say dot get serial number. Okay, that's what I should have. All right, so hopefully I clarify uh, if you are okay so far with all my explanations, I think you're pretty much th uh, through the actual uh, the actual coding that I'm gonna put. The, the sketch over here is pretty informal, but I think it's very informative. But now to really translate it, this into code, you need to be precise. Okay, let me now do that.